<laughs> Wait! Don't run away! Come back here! Don't run away! Hello and welcome to my Model Corner Project 32. In this session we'll build, paint, and detail the highly requested F-35 Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter. As a nod to all those endorsements, I've chosen the more expensive and larger 132 scale F-35C molded by Trumpeter. This kit of the carrier-based F-35 Caddo Bar variant offers a few different options that we'll need to pick from during various stages of the construction. Let's find out if it's worth the price of admission. It's highly theoretical, Ben. Theoretical? We kick this one off once again with the ejection seat and cockpit construction. Overall, the fit of the pieces in this kit is good. I had started this project with great enthusiasm and things were going really well, but a series of heartbreaking personal events in rapid succession destroyed my interest to do work on this project and everything was halted for months. When I did resume work, I lacked focus, making errors, going with poor paint colors, and working with less precision. While I did correct for these problems, it required more work just to remedy these issues and continue. I'll point out some of these events as they arise during the video.
This cockpit has a lot of black components in it, so we need to do some work in order to help make multiple features distinctive from each other. In the case of the seat and headrest, we can use some white weathering powder to create some contrast as well as the look of upholstery and wear. I rushed through the ejection handle painting and did less than a stellar job. I repainted it much later in the build. Maintaining flight level 350, assigned flight level 250 when ready. Call 711, sending a day. Director Tango, contact approach 125.6. Excellent, the Michali cleared to drop lead controlled airspace descending. There's uh, multiple. Oh, there's two VFR returns. Looks like there's one just to Barney Calandra, one to the south. And to that rescue 511's now clear. Clear to drop lead control airspace descending. Clear to drop lead control airspace descending. Copy that. Oh, traffic control and control. Check off Alpha. Managed to get some more track shortening for you. Re-clear direct to Sanad. Direct to Sanad, thanks. Check off Alpha. New Zealand 1199, contact approach 125-6. 125-6, New Zealand 1199. Unit 4, contact Sanad 125 -6. As an old school F-16 avionics tech, I'm used to more instrumentation, panels, and analog displays than the relatively spartan F-35 glass cockpit. We only require a little of the usual sanding to reveal the limited number of knobs, switches, and buttons. We'll rely on the kit decals to provide the colored displays in sharper detail. This model set does not include a pilot figure, so you'll have to locate one if you'd like to add it to your fighter jet. No, you need one in the correct scale. We have fixed these blister casings that allow the air traffic control centers to track the F-35 during normal peacetime operations. Unfortunately, we have these manufacturing artifacts right in the middle of the upper wing surfaces that need to be sanded down and polished without damaging the surrounding areas.
We just have a few final steps in the cockpit area before the upper fuselage half is ready for bonding to the lower half. The weapons bays are nicely detailed if not all that accurate, but they suffice for our basic needs. Since the F-35s are pretty new and clean, we'll want to keep our final wash to more of a shadow and detailed technique rather than the additional grime and used look. After an initial rubdown, cleanup was performed using plain lighter fluid in a brush to reactivate the residual wash and move it into the crevices and edges as well as wick up any excess. We also perform equivalent steps on all the equipment pieces that will be added to the bays. Interestingly, this model has interlocking tabs much like puzzle pieces that help hold the parts in place as they're mated and glued. In a similar approach to the weapons bay painting and detailing, we tend to all the other compartments that need to be completed for all the sections included within the fuselage.
best brains in the world have been running through this thing with a fine tooth comb. In what way? There is a considerable amount of detail that has been applied to the engine core pieces even though it will be completely hidden within the fuselage. It is a very reasonable option for a modeler to exhibit this sub-assembly externally as an accompanying piece to the jet and you could even take it further by adding scratch-built parts for an even higher level of realism. Boy, this thing is dynamite. Of note, it would be better for the instructions to have the fan disc part L10 attached in the very first step. I had initial reservations, and you'll see shortly that if the manual is followed as originally diagrammed, as I did, a problem arises. Images of the Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine have shades of chrome, aluminum, and in some cases strong burnt iron tones in varying degrees between other F-135 engine pictures. We'll apply the tricolor hues here. At this point, the aforementioned issue concerning the front of this engine arrangement occurs. The fit is too tight for L10 to rest onto the inner ring foundation, causing the outer blades to stick out above the casing. There is a risk of damaging the work already accomplished to correct this now. After some worrisome and finagling, the inner disc was properly placed and then the forward blades installed and aligned with the shell. The external molding of the engine nozzle is very nice. Internally, we want to replicate the off-white look and the alternating burn-marked slats. After masking off the panels, a regular pencil is used to create the exhaust markings. Rather than taping off all these teeth, hand brushing the metallic paint color is utilized and then airbrushing the rest to blend it all together. some touch-ups on the top of the crown. Finally, wash is applied to bring out the features and add a tarnished metal effect. Later some rust colored weathering powder was applied to produce an off-white tinge internally. I'm used to having the intake parts that have ejector pin marks facing the inside of the duct, so I immediately sanded the marks out and painted them white, only to find out that these were the outer sides. Yeah, that's what I do. I... I... After soaking them in window cleaning solution and wiping away the paint, the pieces were repainted correctly.
After removing the sprue mold channels of the lower fuselage and removing the remnants from the cuts, you can now opt to drill out holes if you plan to add external pylons and munitions in various configurations all the way up to the illustrious beast mode. We're now ready to add all our preparatory work. One step to be undertaken before closing the fuselage halves is to paint these air scoops. And now for our power plant and intakes installment. We do have these seam lines that are formed after that step is fulfilled to deal with. Let's close it up. This Trumpeter F-35C is based on the newer exterior gray paint scheme where the radar absorbent material color now closely matches the color of the whole jet, and for that reason, no RAM decals are included in the kit. Going retro in time for this build and thereby significantly increasing the level of difficulty, we can use the primer base already applied as the past lighter colored version for those absorbent material shapes. Consequently, the many, many outlines are very painstakingly masked off over the entirety of the fuselage. You think I'm out of my mind. Taking this path set up an agonizing time trying to pick the best gray colors for the exterior. If less than satisfactory choices were selected, the risk of the decals blending into obscurity with the background and too much or too little contrast with the ram formations were a menacing risk. I'm so frightened. Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. <laughs> In the forward fuselage area, we need a gray that is lighter than the main exterior gray, but darker than the RAM primer gray we have applied. I came up with a distinct mix I'll call custom gray number two that will provide a slightly darker color for the RAM and the forward intake areas. After application of the unique blend was completed, the appropriate areas were masked off and the remainder of the fuselage was airbrushed on with the main gray coloring. We'll probably have many touch-ups to apply after the masking is removed. Should we skip watching that? Just give me a simple yes or no. No. Oh, but that's too simple. Why don't you give it a little thought? Surprisingly, we discover our efforts are rewarded with minimal paint corrections needed.
We have a handful of outside panel areas and features to paint in separate colors. Here's a diagram of some of those sections needing our attention. We have a nice looking upper fuselage. And with all that beautiful frosting. We'll add just a little wash to highlight the rivets and create some shadowing aspects to the outlines of the ram. We toned down the wash after letting it set for a short time. Will five minutes be too soon? Before we continue on with the main body of the jet, we need to advance the work of other important elements of the build. This may go a bit quickly here, so pause the video if needed. Boy, I've got things to do. Yes, sir, important things to do. I... What have I got to do? I... We have landing gear doors, weapons bay doors, and the tail hook doors with much work to be accomplished. Here's a moving collage of the beginning tasks. After that is all complete, we add the same fuselage primer gray to the doors, then mask off the ram edges, which is followed by the main exterior gray painting. Finally, unlike other Navy jets that have red outline doors, the F-35C doors have a dark gray outline that we must add. Let's move on to the flight control surfaces following through in a manner of construction and painting similar to the fuselage.
For the landing gear, we are given the option of having the nose gear launch bar in the up position or down for the hookup to the catapult shuttle. We'll pose it up. If you notice, the actuator was not attached to the nose gear as it should have been at this instance. To recover from this error, the attaching pins were later cut and the cylinder slid into place. Luckily, there was plenty of friction to hold them together and it will be easy to fit and glue the group to the gear bay at the appropriate time. At this point I was better focused and doing the right kind of pin wash instead of mopping the layers on when the gear bays and weapon bays were being detailed. This model set includes quality rubber tires with good detail. They really did a nice job. Who's they? That's what I want you to find out. The tires go on nicely, but it should be noted that the nose gear hub combo has an off-center slot to hold the rubber wheel in place, so correct attachment is dependent on the direction they're put on. At this point, the armament is addressed. For this particular F-35C, we will load up the internal base with two AMRAMs, two GBU-31 Bravos, and we'll also add two sidewinders to the outer stations 1 and 6 on the folding wings.
landing gear in model kits can be problematic. Sometimes the manufacturer provides frail parts that barely support the weight of the model. Other times the fit can be poor and also a game of twister is required in order to put the parts all together at once. However, and nicely, this F-35C model does not suffer from these shortcomings. We have a good set of gear in this case. All during this project I was quite concerned that things would not end up very well. But when I started attaching the flight control surfaces I stepped back for a moment and I was pleasantly surprised that the planning and intricate masking, painting, detailing and all the other ingredients began to add up pretty nicely for this amateur builder. The additional parts being combined here all contributed to a dividend of great satisfaction at the end of a long endeavor. We're getting close to finishing and getting this F-35C onto the elevator and onto the flight deck. I hope you'll join us for a special build in the next episode. We'll be honoring a viewer who has been very supportive of the channel with continuous words of encouragement and kind personal notes. He has selected a specific kit which will be presented as Project 33. What is it? I'm sorry. I can't tell you. We just have the canopy to fix to finish this up. Take care, and we'll see you later.